We're going to go over some stuff with my boy, Nick Russo, guy from the neighborhood. He started training with me a few years ago. You know, good friend of mine. We grew a good friendship over the years. Uh, came to me pretty out of shape like most people do. And with my help and his hard work, he got into really good shape, got really big and strong. So we're just going to talk about like how he started his diet, where he started from the beginning, uh, where he is now, how he changed his body actually pretty quick, but he had to put the work in, you know? So uh, just to give a little insight, I'm not going to bash my boy publicly, but when he walked up and, uh, you know, shook my hand, I haven't seen him in a long time, he was out of shape, you know, pandemic, et cetera. And I remember when we first started training, he couldn't even squat his body, couldn't even body squat. I actually had to put a band under his butt. And uh, through just the course of working hard and uh, my guidance, diet, now he squats 315 for almost 15 to 20. All right? And not that long a time. Dramatically changed his body. But I got to tell you, one thing what some of this motherfucker do, he could press like a motherfucker. That is for sure. Some people just built to do it, and he can do it. But anyways, all right? So a little bit of banging on you and bragging about you. All right? <laughs> so, Nick. So I want you to give me a normal day of yours. And what I'm going to do, because a lot of people have the same day as you do. And I'm going to try and fix it and correct it. And so give some people some guidance. So give me a rundown of your day. All right. So let's say, let's say a typical day, right? I get up. If I'm with you or if I'm going to the gym, I'm at the gym at 6 o'clock. Home by 7 a.m., shower, get the kids up, and I have breakfast. Typical breakfast for me is two cups of egg whites with uh, a cup of oatmeal, Two, table, two tablespoons of PB2 and a banana, and I blend it into a shake, and I'll drink that back. Why? Because it's just quick. It's easy. I don't have to cook anything. I'm, I got the kids getting ready. Then, you know, usually I have meals that I buy, meal prep meals. So I'll go to work after I get the kids on the bus. I'll have either a yogurt or something, like, small by 10 o'clock. Then, let's say, you know, 1 o'clock, I'll have one of my meals. 3 o'clock, 3.30, I have another meal. Dinner... I try to eat no later than seven. Uh, and then, you know, then whatever I eat at night, you know, I'm always hungry before I go to bed. You know, my body needs fuel when I sleep. I know that, but it's tough because, you know, what do you eat? What, what do you grab out of the cabinet at night? Mostly peanut butter, right? That's my go-to. If I have even like a little craving for something sweet, I'll go to the peanut butter. My weakness is ice cream. We spoke about this the other day. But, you know, that's a typical day. But then, you know, comes, let's say Thursday, you know, you go out to dinner or Friday, or if you're on the road, like, you know, I, I jump back and forth between an office and being on the road. When I'm on the road, it's so much harder to structure your meals and bring stuff. You know, where are you going to find a microwave? Okay, if you see a 7-Eleven, you can pop in and throw your food in their microwave real quick. Other than that, if you're on the road, you know, you're stopping, you're grabbing a sandwich. You're grabbing pizza, which we all love. You know, so that's where I find it more difficult to stay on track is when you're... And the weekends, though, were very rare. are crazy. I mean... So, listen, yeah, you know, so Nick, is. right... That's not so bad, what you do. It's really not. If anything, for the amount of muscle you have, you're probably in a little bit of a deficit and not eating enough. But what's happening is you're landsliding one other way and consuming too much at, different, at, at the wrong times, and the weekends are just a fucking landslide of Mia Posto and drinking. And 100%, 100%. And that's a lot of people like that. Yeah. You're not the only person, all right? Yeah. So part of this game training is the most fun part, and you're very good at it, all right? You're very, you're very disciplined. You train very often and consistent. That's why you made the changes you did. Now, Nick has a little bit of a slow metabolism, but yes, it is tough for him to lose body fat. So that's why dieting for himself is even more important to stay leaner. Big is not the problem. Staying lean for him is the problem. So meal, like the pre-made meals are good. You have to buy the right ones. They have to be ratioed correctly. And now the thing is this. A lot of people do are on the go a lot. You have to be prepped for that or make sure you have enough meals with you that you're not in a fucking, you know, oh my God, what am I gonna do for a meal? All right, shakes, bars to hold you over, or just good meals, and you do what you gotta do if you wanna get in that shape. It's, you really gotta want it. Now the weekends, we know you can make better choice when people are out. So what I used to do when I used to be super shredded is you just stick with proteins. Just stick with proteins. I know it's fucking hard, you go to Mia Posto, you, it's, it's very hard. Now it's not as important for me, right? But most of the time I eat a lot cleaner than I did year round, just because I'm like a robot. Just, I just do it and do it. I used to change. I used to landslide a little bit more when I was, you know, go up and down when I was younger. Now it's just super consistent, you know. The older you get, the years go by on Twos, they say. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I'm so consistent now. So my advice is for people out there, 
be prepped when you go out, all right? Be prepared, or especially during the day if you're driving like Nick does or whatever it may be. And on the weekends, if you do like to go out and you do like to drink, I'm like the reality, people like to drink. You like to drink, right? I like, I like, I like drinking. It's impossible to tell people to stop drinking. And <clears throat> listen, it's, 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 you know, like I said, a lot of the times for me too, it's, it's the pizza. It's, you know, I'll stop and, you know, like I'll, I, if I, I like pizza, right? So I'll eat three slices. It's a lot of carbs for, you know, for, yeah. for, for me. Some guys, you know, my, my, like my son, he can eat all the carbs he wants. He doesn't put on a pound. Me, I eat two slices of pizza and I feel it right away. So let me go back to actually, now I'm thinking about your, your day. Your day is pretty tight. You probably don't eat enough protein actually for you at certain times or total by the day. The late night snacks, everybody has a problem with. I have a problem with them. And when I was on fucking Super Point, when I do go on vacation with my family now, I'm, I'm a late eater. I just am. I always have been. Even when I was in fucking insane shape, I was a late eater, but it was what I ate. I stuck to only protein. So meaning this, like I would eat egg white omelets and I would sprinkle a little Parmesan cheese on it. See, Parmesan cheese, why it's so good. If you look at the numbers, a little bit, right? And there's no numbers really in it. Maybe like one or two grams of fat goes a long way with flavor. Whereas opposed, if you did like American cheese, something like that, you'd have to put a lot of American cheese on that omelet to get the same type of end result with flavor wise. That's why Parmesan cheese was my go-to. Someone, some fitness girl told my boy this in California years ago, and ever since that, I was like, holy, she used to do crazy shit, though. She actually used to take egg whites, put them in a, uh, what do you call it, an ice cube tray, and microwave it with Parmesan cheese and, like, parsley in it, which actually doesn't sound too bad, but that's pretty I might gangster. actually try that. That's actually pretty good. I might actually try right? that. But you said you were eating peanut butter. I love peanut butter. Love it. Like, what's gross is I could sit on a fucking couch with a jar of peanut butter and just the jelly and just go to I town. I can just eat the peanut butter yo, with but a Yo, but honestly, like, lately, that was what the problem was. I love Trader Joe's almond butter, and, like, I would purposely not buy it because I know when I eat that motherfucker, I just eat, fucking eat the whole thing, you eat bro. the whole thing. Yeah. With jelly, bro, that's better than peanut butter, that yeah. shit. It was fucking, like, crack. Yeah. yeah I I'm, love I'm, it. I'm, I'm like, the same way. And I saw my body get fat. I'm like, yo, I can't buy this. You know what I mean? But, uh... But then what else would you have for a late night snack? Okay, other than the egg white omelet, like, okay, that's a salt. That's like a food. Okay, but if I'm craving a sweet, I definitely do non-fat Greek yogurt, and I put two Truvia packets, and I crush up a strawberry. I chop up a strawberry or, like, blueberries. They mash it up in there. I know a lot of people, like this dude, CrossFit dude, is talking, like, he must love cherries. I'm going to try it, actually, because all he talks about when he talks about his frozen fruit, he's on the meat and fruit diet, is uh, frozen cherries. Frozen cherries in there, let it melt a little bit. It sounds actually pretty good, so I'm going to give it a shot. But what it is, why I like the Greek yogurt, it's heavy. It'll fill me up. It takes time a little bit to eat. It's so really a lot of times I think eating in front at night when you have that hour or two, it's out of boredom and just sure habitual, sure. you know? So I know it wasn't the best thing, and I probably was able to get away with it when I was a little young because of my metabolism, but I used to do pistachio nuts. Why pistachio nuts? Why pistachio nuts over peanuts or cashews? You have to eat one at a time. Right. It's about the busyness. The busyness. Watching the show. Even like, yo, before I had kids and I had, you know, and I had time and I was sitting in front of the TV for like an hour and a half before I went to bed. I'm like, fuck. There's only so much sugar-free jelly you could eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's only so much of that. So I would do pistachios because then I would eat a decent amount, but it would take fucking forever. You know what I mean? So those are my little tricks. Or when I was really in insane, and like I went through the pistachio, and I'm like, I want to get leaner. I would actually measure out my Honey Nut Cheerios and eat like one at a time. That's fucking right. nuts, though. All right. You know, even though it's a carb, Listen. but when you measure it out, you eat one at a time, you know, that'll work, too. It's the same thing like the almonds. I mean, almonds, you know, they do take a while to chew and break down in your mouth. So like, I feel like when I eat almonds at night, like for like a late night snack, you know, like you almost feel it in your jaw. Like your jaw is getting a workout, but it's, you know, you, you can eat. A cup of them, and it takes you a good amount of time. That's what it. I did notice about almonds. Yeah, I did notice that about almonds. It takes you time. It's not like just like, and they're gone. And you go, peanuts, oh, I need more. Handfuls, bro. Handfuls. Even though the inflammation, it's terrible for you. I love peanuts, bro. Yeah. My go-to was like, I used to love like salty peanuts and glass of cold milk. Mm. Well, like Ritz crackers with that. You know, I'm really secretly a fat kid trapped in this body. That's, but, I know. can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah, but back to Nick with his training, motherfucker strong. His diet could be better, like I said, and like when he goes out, he drinks a lot. It is what it is. He just has to make better food choices, even though he put on a shit ton of muscle. You know, he's been leaner before and then gets a little bit more out of shape. It's harder for him. But for those who have lived the same lifestyle as Nick, 
Stick with proteins when you got vegetables. Even though there's salt and all kinds of shit on it, it's still better than eating all the fucking, you know, lobster mac and uh, potatoes on the side with everything. So that's pretty much as in terms of the diet, you know? Cheese. And the cheese, lots of cheese. Now, cheese has a lot of calories to every ounce of protein. People don't know it's more than double. So that's why, really, you got to minimize the fats even when you're trying to get lean. You know, have a certain amount. Because <clears throat> if you starve yourself of fat completely, what people don't know, your body goes into something where it, it reserves whatever it, it doesn't have. That's why you have to feed your body a little bit of fat so it can let go of it. Do you understand what I mean? Sure. Someone thinks uh, when we were younger, we had that misconception to do that, like oh, cut all the fat out. If you cut all the fat out, one, if you're natural, there's certain things that like hormone development, et cetera, what, what fats do. But now when you don't implement any fat to your diet, your body's going to want to hold on to it even more. Do you understand? It stores it for later. Yeah. So now what we're going to look at is, so since Nick ch did change dramatically naturally, diet, hard training, consistent, and then at a certain time, you start using some supplements, all right, like a lot of people do, but not a drastic amount. Um, like I said, Nick is actually a pretty good responder to stuff, and we have his blood work here. I just want to go over some numbers, not bash them, because mine were off and up and down before in the past, but since it's on my phone, I'm going to blow it up a little bit. All right. Let's look at first, well, okay, this went in this order. That was your lipid profile, right? Let's go through here. Let's go to his hormone panel. That's not his hormone panel. What's where's your hormone panel, bro? Is this it? I'm blind. I can't see shit anymore. There we go. Nope. It's your vitamin panel. Hold on a second. Did you send to me an order? Oh, here we go. I think this is it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay. For those who do or do not know how to read a testosterone panel, okay, Nick's total testosterone at this time was 2,405 nanograms per deciliter. That's high, all right? Now, the reasoning why you're like, oh, more testosterone, you'd feel better, and yes, you'd feel better, but there comes a certain point where too much is too much, meaning it'll wreak havoc on other areas of your blood panel and health. So having super high super, super physiological levels of testosterone <clears throat> not only puts stress on your liver, um, your cardiac system, it also inhibits your body from absorbing collagen to the joints, your muscles get more rigid, certain people, and uh, your blood, your, your hematocrit levels, your hemoglobin levels it wreaks having on. But these are just a few problems that it can have. <coughs> I've been waiting to do that, I'm dying. Okay, so his, his testosterone levels are extremely off the charts. Now, this has happened in the past with people, right, who aren't that high, or even like normal high. They go to a doctor, their levels are five to 600 nanograms the deciliter. The range is normal, 250. It should be a little bit higher, up to just say 1,000. They fall in the normal range of six to 700, right? But they don't feel good. They have all the side effects, or all the symptoms of low testosterone. Now, most general practitioners do not know that when you look at a hormone panel, you have to look for other markers like your sex hormone binding globulin, which, is, which reflects what your free testosterone is. Free testosterone to testosterone, what does that mean? Isn't it your testosterone, testosterone? No. It's your free testosterone you actually have to look at. That is the bioavailable testosterone which your body uses, which means just say you have a very high or high normal testosterone level, right, and you're feeling all the symptoms of low T, depression, your dick ain't working, you're getting fat, all your testosterone could be bound up and your free would be low. So therefore, you look at something called your sex hormone binding globulin, your SHBG. I looked at yours before. Yours is low. Your freeze probably off the charts. I didn't even look. I just know it is. <clears throat> I bet you it's like 600 or some shit like that in the ratio, or maybe even higher. And I know by you just looking at you, just you have a, a, an abnormal, not abnormal, though, slightly lower sex hormone binding globulin. The only other thing that could happen is your free is going to be in a higher range, unless your albumin is through albumin, which is another binder, is off the charts. But I looked at that and it seemed pretty normal. All right. Um, that's in terms of testosterone. But what I did notice was, your estrogen, your estradiol was very, very high. Now, why is that? It's because, like I said before, Nick has some adipose tissue, some, some body fat. Therefore, he has more aromatized enzyme 
than other people who are lean. For instance, him and I have completely different body types. I'm always leaner, all right? I could get pretty shredded, but it's a little bit harder for me to get bigger. He could get bigger, it's harder for him to get shredded. But since he carries a little bit more body fat, he has a little bit more aromatized enzyme. You say, what is aromatized enzyme? What that is, that's an enzyme in your body that takes testosterone, and there's other converters, and converts it into estrogen, all right? So therefore, someone like you would need more of an anti-estrogen estrogen blocker, like a nostrazole, tamoxifen, nolidex. I wouldn't suggest leachazole. It's too strong. It's a suicide inhibitor. That should wrecks your cholesterol. But therefore, you think, oh, more, more estrogen blocking, I would have more testosterone. You have to be careful with estrogen blockers. You just need small amounts. Don't forget, they're all breast cancer medications, okay? Female breast cancer. What initiates tumors to grow is estrogen, anti-estrogens, block estrogen, all right? But what they do in men is they also could fuck up your cholesterol, well, females too, but they fuck up your lipid profile and drop your HDLs to the floor. That's why you can be careful. There's a small line of wave you have to ride with anti-estrogens, all right? Now, most likely looking at this, because I have such you know, knowledge and, and experience of reading blood panels, I would bet anything your hemoglobin, America, your levels are high. Yeah, so therefore, Nick at a super physiological dose would therefore have to dump every probably eight, max 10 weeks. You let out a pint, your body builds it back up. What people do not know is this though. Maybe not in Nick's case, but just say someone who has a somewhat higher than normal level. Just say they're in about the 1200 mark, all right? Which is considered super high optimal, borderline super physiological now. You could still initiate an overproduction of hemoglobin in your hematocrit, red blood cell, right? But you could retrain your body, meaning when you dump up, you almost front load dump, I'm from what I've learned, and you dump more off in that pipe, you could actually bring your levels back down to a normal range for a longer period of time. What people do not know is that if you were to go dump that pint, it fucking shoots right back up right away. You think you're good for three months, you're not good for three months, you're only good for a short amount of time. Because your bike boom, brings it right back up. But to retrain it, you have to do a front load to bring it down a little bit. Do you understand what I mean? So what are you saying? So you, you, like, you do like an extra like dump or how does that? They told me when to, when to go dump my blood. I was like, oh, I'm good for a few months. He's like, not really because this is what you have to do. What happens for people who are super physiological, a little bit higher than what I was, your body builds it right back up right away, jumps up, boom. So for you in order to get, keep that number down, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit, you have to do a front load dump. Like you do it like consistently four or five or maybe five times. You do it once every, just say three weeks. And what that'll do, that'll permanently bring it down for a, a, a decent amount of time. It won't bring it down forever, but it'll be a slower amount of time for it to creep back up. See, cause I just donated, I just did blood work two weeks ago or three weeks ago and I donated two days before I went for the blood work and the doctor called me and said my hemoglobin was still high. And I, and I gave a pint, you know. See, it, shoot, see it shoots right back so up. It shot right back up. Yeah. So he said, keep donating. And I take a baby aspirin every morning when I take my, my vitamins. Baby aspirins are good. Uh, natokinase is another natural something that keeps the blood loose and thin. It's from coagulating and getting thicker. I mean, because what happens is when you start making it, like I use the, the engine analogy all the time. I like analogies. It's like dumping a pint of en uh, oil into an engine. The engine doesn't get bigger. Where's right. the oil going? Right. Just going to get thicker and sludge it. And then, it's, you know, gets thicker, sludge exactly. you know, It's the same thing with the blood. All right. So there's supplementations, dumping, natokinase, baby aspirin's great. I just learned this. I don't, there's not enough research or is it true, but a doctor that I do know went to a, a, a conference and everyone correlates that your hemoglobin, all right? reflects on your iron levels. Oh, my hemoglobin is 19. Not your hematocrit, your hemoglobin. The hematocrit is the actual thickening, that's the density of the blood. Hemoglobin, or blood volume and the density. Hemoglobin reflects from what they say is, is your iron and oxygen levels. So the doctor, I'm just regurgitating what he told me, all right? I don't look too much into it, but for those out there, look a little further into it for yourself, but I'm just gonna give you information that I was provided with. Your hemoglobin, okay? Really, it carries oxygen. That's your oxygen levels along with your iron levels, all right? So when I was like, dude, mine's 19. He goes, that's high normal. That's high. I said, yeah, but my iron is like, that's not your iron. He goes, let me look at your iron levels. He goes, your iron levels are fine. You actually have to look at your direct iron levels to know what your iron levels are. So there's almost like I'd say a new view on the way you would look at a hemoglobin level 
from what he was just educated on. Do you understand what I mean? Instead, most people, like I know guys, they went, oh my God, dude, I was a fucking 20. Is that high for oxygen or is that high for iron? What's his actual iron levels? I didn't look at his blood panel, that individual. Do you understand what I mean? I have to look a little bit more into it, but he said he just went to a conference on testosterone replacement, et cetera, and this is what he was educated on. It was interesting. It makes sense, because actually I had the same thing. My iron level was high. The last blood work that I got back, and you know, he was like, don't take any supplements that have any iron in it. He's like, just you know, stick with what you're doing, and hopefully it'll come down. I was like, all right. Yeah. All right, so this is going to be a quick one, guys. We're going to retouch on this a little bit. So I just want to go over with Nick. This is my boy Nick. You're going to see him again, definitely. He's a little tired today because he definitely went out last night. This is Sunday morning. Usually he's a ball of energy. So I just want to, you to get to know him a little bit. He's a little crazy dude. He's my boy. He's uh, very charismatic and uh, trains very hard, like I said. And uh, just wanted to go over a little bit of numbers just to teach you a little bit of something. Uh, reflect on yourself, something a little bit changed for yourself. And we'll circle back around this. Hope you enjoyed it.